We have this story, and I, I love this one so much. CNN pundit oh, yeah. preps Biden voters for a Trump win. That's one way to put it, post millennial. Quote, I doubt the New York indictment would have brought against a defendant whose name was not Donald Trump. This is Fareed Zakaria of CNN. But don't take, don't take it from me. Listen to him break it down for you. And the trials against him keep him in the spotlight, infuriate his base, who sees him as a martyr, and even may serve to make him the object of some sympathy among people in general who believe that his prosecutors are politically motivated. This happens to be true, in my opinion. I doubt the New York indictment would have been brought against a defendant whose name was not Donald Trump. A majority of Americans are skeptical that Trump will be able to get a fair trial, according to a CNN poll. I love that. He says, and his fans see it as politically motivated, which is motivated, which is true, in my opinion. That was on CNN. Yo, it's bad. And you even had an MSNBC, a legal an uh, analyst defending Trump's team because Stormy Daniels is so bad. They said that Stormy Daniels basically turned this into a sexual assault case, which has prejudiced the jury. And it's shocking that it's being allowed. I'm like, when CNN and MSNBC are defending Trump, that's you, we don't need Nikki Haley for unity, right? Eli? We got unity now because <laughs> they, they've, they've gone so sour with these. Uh, they screwed these trials up so, so miserably. Everyone seemingly being forced to defend Donald Trump. But I just want to say I love that we're in the moment where everybody, everybody probably not everybody. A lot of people were Trump supporters from day one. But for a lot of those holdouts, you know, me included, we had those stop making me defend Trump moments where Trump would come out and say something like, you know, we're going to we're going to secure the border and we're going to make sure we 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 deal with this properly because these cartels, these people are animals. I'm telling you, the people coming there are animals. And then the left comes out and says Trump calls immigrants and re calls refugees animals. And then I'm like, no, no, look, he, he's talking about the cartels. Like, stop making me defend him. OK. Now we're at the point where CNN and MSNBC are in the, please, no, like, stop making me defend Trump face, <laughs> yeah. which means give them six months and they'll be Trump supporters. Well, Stormy Daniels is interesting because initially they're like, she's so brave. She's taking the stand. And initially, like the first, I would say, 12 hours of coverage, they're like, she got had all these great points. And then, you know, the further we got away from her testimony, the more and more people were like, Actually, this could be a major issue on appeal that she prejudiced the jury. Actually, she really couldn't rein herself in. Actually, she said way more than the prosecutors wanted her to say. And I think you're seeing this every time they put up a new uh, uh, witness in this case. They're like, this is the star witness. Well, actually, it wasn't that good. In the case of Storm Daniels, actually, this may have hurt everything. And I think my, Michael Cohen's testimony might go similarly. They're saying like, oh, he's really he's really got Trump there. And then later it's going to be like, but actually, he was always not that credible of a witness. He is a convicted felon. You know, it, it, he's convicted of tax evasion. Like, it, it's not a great cast of characters for the prosecution there. This is a serious issue, I believe, for the Joe Biden campaign, because they're actually big fans of Vareed Sicario, which kind of represents like the median Democrat. And for him to like plainly and nakedly see that this is political and publicly say so, I think is a serious issue for Democrats. Did, did you hear about uh, Jen Psaki's lie in her, her book, book where she said Biden did not check his watch at the it was it was, was it a funeral or at, was it memorial? when it was the the bodies being transferred back to the U.S. from right. Afghanistan it was the 13 right. Marines and she said in her book he didn't check his watch it was fake news and then and cited an article that said he checked his watch while the body, bodies were being unloaded my my view here is MSNBC these these Democrat media aligned people they want to lie to you Yes. Fareed Zakaria admitting this is not because he's being honest. It's not because he finally realized it's because the lie is so egregious. Mm. The stupidest person in the country wouldn't even believe it. Yeah. But not necessarily. A lot of stupid people w do believe it. But they're at a point where they're like, guys, look, we can slip a lot past these dumb viewers, but this one's not going to fly. We have no choice. No one's going to believe it. Like, our audience size will shrink to the 10 stupidest people in the country if we try and claim this is a real case. Well, and their ratings have already been in the tank anyway, right? I mean, <clears throat> but see, and that's why. Yeah, and that's why. I mean, you know, they're propagating all these lies out here. It's such a strange world to be in where I'm like, oh my God, I agree with Fareed Zarkarian. But uh, <laughs> look, <laughs> unity is possible. Yeah, I, yeah. I think loosely the Democrat plan here was to, even if they were to lose the case, was to try to impugn Donald Trump's character and make it, oh, Donald Trump cheated on his wife, allegedly, because I believe he's still denying uh, the relationship. But I guess that's the idea. They want to make him seem like an adulterer. 
but they've been doing this for so long, and I'm surprised that they haven't understood that this isn't effective. Isn't an effective message. They're just rehashing the Stormy Daniel right. stuff. We've already done all the Stormy Daniel stuff. So when Cohen was on trial day, they were talking about you know that it would have been devastating if the story came out because Trump would have lost among women. But he went on to win that election, and also is you know as far as I can tell. There, it's not really the major thing that turns women off. Yeah, he, he, would have, he would have lost women. I'm sure lots of women feel very strongly about Stormy Daniels. I, 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 she, I'm, she's the representation okay. of all of us. That's who I want yeah. the moral high agree to be. I, I think you look at the case, though, and the fact that it's taken this long, as Trump stated, I think it was today, it's four weeks he's not been able to campaign. When you look at the case and there's no, there's no real criminal charge here, none of it makes sense. I mean, it's wild. There's no crime. Yeah, I think they, it's politically they, advantageous for Trump because it's making people like Varit Skaria come out and right. say this. Right, I agree. But I don't think that was their plan. I think yeah. their plan was to hobble mm -hmm. Trump in an election year yeah. by making it so he can't campaign. And now Trump is like, then I'll campaign in front of the courthouse every single day. And it's working. Oh, no, yeah. he's totally flipped it. And it's like, this is a witch hunt. And any objective observer of this can look at it and say, this is a witch hunt. They, yeah. I mean, they're dragging them all over the country to all these different trials that just happen to be during an election year. Uh, Even though there have been, like with this one, it's been turned down two or three times yeah. before. They could have brought it way earlier. They didn't. They yeah, brought it now. It, it's all fake. All this is fake. It's just convenient timing for them, just like Tim's saying, to try to hobble him in his election. But Trump, look, he, he is a, a genius when it comes to the media and just flipped it right on his head. And he's just doing holding a press conference right out in front every of Every day. Every and day. Before and after. And having huge rallies like down the street in Wildwood, you know, right. not down the street, but like. Oh, he's got it. He's got to do the Madison Square Garden one. <clears throat> oh yeah. Imagine, imagine if I think they're not doing uh, court. No, they are doing court on Fridays, and then they get out like four or whatever, right? They don't do it on Wednesdays, they, right? Which is a weird thing, mm -hmm. and very strange. But imagine if Trump said, just abruptly at the last minute, Madison Square Garden rally on like the last week of the trial. And the last day, right after he gets out of court, all right, like the jury deliberating, whatever is going on or whatever happens, filling up Madison Square Garden would be just absolutely nuts. Oh, yeah. that You know, one of the ones that hit for me, too, is that he was either coming out of court or into it. And he stopped and talked to all the labor union guys there mm -hmm. in New York. And they're like, yeah, where about Trump? <laughs> and he, brought, he, like, he brought pizzas to the firemen? Yeah, he brought Come pizzas on. to the firemen. What's a little bit shocking about the most recent Trump rallies, too, is that it doesn't have um, as much vitriol from the left as they used to. There aren't these protests outside all of his rallies That's like a good there point. was coming up on 2016. I've been to like a half dozen of them. I'm constantly looking for protesters, but there are none. Maybe if he came to MSG, <laughs> there would be some. But it's interesting, too, because the Democrats are dealing constantly with protesters at their left flank. The Joe Biden campaign is constantly screening people coming to his campaign rallies because they don't want viral videos of um, him being yelled at by Palestine protesters. So it's just interesting seeing how that plays out. Yeah, I think there's completely different energies coming from the two campaigns. And Trump's is sort of gaining momentum in a positive way, whether you like him or not. And Joe Biden's is constantly hitting these roadblocks because the sort of most intense people in, in their demographic, what I would say are young progressive voters who feel like they are called to activism over everything else. You know, instead of rallying for Biden, they are prepared to rally against him. I don't know if you saw all the videos of uh, people walking out of college protests over the weekend because they were, you know, waving flags or doing whatever. Yeah. Like in another universe, these people would have been like, we can't have Trump. It has to be Biden over everything. And instead, they're like divided on this major issue, meaning they are they are separated from their party. They're protesting at their graduations for Palestine. Not that, oh, Trump's a threat to democracy and, oh, Trump's a fascist and the world's going to end because of it. And I'll tell you this, I bet there will not be very big protests at the RNC in Milwaukee. Oh, definitely not. Yeah. And there will be massive protests at the DNC in Chicago. That, Did you hear they're trying to go virtual? With exactly. That? Yeah, as a, they're, as they're, a... they're so concerned about what? potential riots that the DNC wants to go like half digital, half remote with their with their convention. Well, and who I... benefits off of being digital here? Joe Biden, right? Yeah. This is one of oh, the right, things that he can stay in the basement. He can stay yeah, in the basement. Yeah. They can light him properly. They can give him breaks off to the side. It's not like you'll get, you know, an on the ground reporter like Alad noticing that he's actually being like helped off the stage. You can't well, get him stumbling upstairs if he's just seated you can't at a get desk. People constantly what, yelling at him about Palestine because well, that's what it would be. What they do is, well, in all in all honesty and seriousness, yes, I was going to make a joke, but you're absolutely right. He's going to get heckled. They're going to boo. Constantly. Ton, tons too. of people at the convention, mm -hmm. progressive activists who are the Democratic Party are going to be screaming about Palestine. I was going to make a joke that by having him in the basement, they can pull his skin back and hook him up to a, <laughs> an IV 
so that he can be functioning during the duration of it. But you're correct. This is also what happened during COVID. So they have the framework to have a virtual uh, yeah, convention. That's right. That's right. It, mm -hmm. They already have the. Um, it's happened before, so yeah. But when and again, in, in, benefited uh, from it. I mean, the world that, in which Biden functions right now, he himself as a person. At the end of the day, a presidential election, like any election, my election, anybody's, people are hiring you to do a job. He couldn't get hired right now to be a greeter at Walmart. He, <laughs> he wouldn't be able to complete the sentences. Hello, how are you today? I mean, it's just <laughs> he wouldn't. Well he wouldn't be a cart collector. No. No, couldn't no. do that. Which I, I I don't know. Is that harder than greeter? I think it's harder. You gotta walk <laughs> get, around. Greeters, the, the greeters at Walmart sit. They're just like hanging out. Yeah, because he'd be sitting there, and then he'd be like, huh. "Come on!" They'd be like, "Okay, Grandpa, it's time to go to bed." <laughs> I mean, he is well past what's retirement age is sixty seven in this yeah. country. Well past. He's well past life expectancy. Exactly. Yeah. But this is the thing. Like in a different culture, we would be like, "You are too old, and you should retire." Like this is just something we do. You turn over power to younger people. But instead, it's like again, I like Donald Trump a lot, but he is also in his late seventies. We have two older people now. Granted, Donald Trump's much healthier. It's obvious night and day. But this will just, again, siphon young voters away from Biden, who say Can't, he's just an old white man who do, they don't want there. I just want to point out, we've got Biden, who is inviolable. I mean, he's, he's on the verge of death. I, I mean, that with all due respect, right? Okay, it's time to, it's time to bring Grandpa Joe, I, you wheel him into the sun and put a blanket on his lap and let him just relax all day. Then you've got RFK Jr. We just found out a worm ate his brain, part of it, <laughs> yes. and then died. And shout out, I can't remember who said the super chat, but they were like, uh, uh, died of starvation. Yeah. They said the, uh, a worm, a worm was, uh, uh, they, they say that a worm died in uh, RFK Jr.'s head. Poor thing starved it. A brain eating worm died in his head. Poor thing starved to death. And, uh, I'm sorry, RFK's head. What did I say? Did I say Biden? RFK. And then you have Trump who is this cartoonish real estate, reality TV business mogul. And, and I say cartoonish, not in like a, a on serious way in a loud, boisterous and like, uh, what's the right word? I, 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 he's certainly spry, but he is a character to say the least. We have like, this is the wildest presidential election of my lifetime at the very least. Every, they've all been boring up until now. This one's weird. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.